this morning breaking the Wall Street Journal, talking about wider problems found at the IRS. They're finding out that it wasn't just if Tea Party was in their name, mm. and it wasn't just if Patriot was in their name. It also included those worried about government spending, <laughs> debt, taxes, basically any conservative fiscal uh, 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 approach. Uh, the IRS decided this is uh, uh, this is mind-boggling. I'm going to say what else. I want you to continue, Mika. But what is mind-boggling also is the headline on the front page of the New York Times, which didn't even put this on the front page of its national edition this weekend. Their headline: IRS focus on conservatives gives GOP a path, an issue to seize on. This this while Mika. The ACLU yeah. is coming out talking about how chilling this is, it, how frightening this is, that this government is using the Internal Revenue Service to target people with whom they disagree. It does not look good at all. It looks, I'd say, embarrassing as a way to start, but we'll find yeah. out much more. Joining us now from Washington, we have the NBC News senior investigative correspondent Lisa Myers joining us now. Lisa, great to have you back on the show. What are you hearing there? Thank you. Well, I, well, people I talked to over the weekend in both parties were absolutely uh, dumbfounded that yeah. something like this could happen in the IRS. Do these people not remember the Nixon administration? I mean, one of the, the uh, abuses of power was his use of the IRS against his political enemies. Um, but clearly what the IRS has said so far doesn't add up. An uh, official on Friday said, well, conservative groups were targeted, but this wasn't politically motivated. Huh? And then, <laughs> and then the acknowledgment that senior officials knew and did not inform Congress. In fact, they told Congress that... Uh, the claims that conservative groups were being targeted were untrue. Hey, and Lisa, can I stop you right there? And just on that point, Mika, read this timeline if you will, okay. will um, and then have Lisa move on that because she was just about talking about what yeah. the, the administrator, what the IRS said. All right, here's the timeline uh, of the IRS's position on the issue. According to reports obtained by the Associated Press, the findings seem to contradict public statements made by the agency's commissioner. In March of 2012, IRS Commissioner Douglas Shulman testified that there was, quote, absolutely no targeting, adding that the investigations were, quote, the kind of back and forth that happens to people. So a year ago, um, absolutely no targeting. On they Saturday, the IRS put out a statement reading, quote, senior leadership was not aware of this level of specific details at the time of the March 2012 hearing. Okay, so they were saying it was just low-level employees in Ohio. That was on Friday. It goes on to say, quote, senior leadership did not have this level of detail. But the Associated Press reports that back in June of 2011, the official who heads the IRS division that oversees tax-exempt organizations learned at a meeting that groups were being targeted. And just to Two months later, in August of 2011, staffers in the IRS's Rulings and Agreements Office, quote, held a meeting with chief counsel so that everyone would have the latest information on the issue. Lisa Myers, uh, people uh, sort of try to clean things up and they'll say, well, you know, they misspoke or there were falsehoods. These are just out-and-out -out lies. I mean, people in middle America would just call these out-and-out -out lies. The IRS has been lying. and. I'm kind of shocked. Even Mother Jones, a very progressive site, was shocked this weekend and said, seriously, the IRS knew this was coming and they still were misleading people on Friday. It, it is amazing to me that uh, when senior, that the senior IRS officials, once they learned this was happening, didn't try to fire the individuals involved. I mean, I know it's very tough in the civil service, but the idea that this seemingly was greeted with, with uh, shrugs within the agency, uh, certainly there doesn't appear to be at this point any strong action that was taken. I agree with Mark, there's a great deal we do not know, but certainly what, what is showing is, is pretty indefensible. Lisa, it's Willie. When we mention people like Richard Nixon, the implication is that this IRS scandal is tied back to the White House and driven by the White House. We should pause, though, here. Is there any indication that the White House knew about this and in some way ordered the IRS to go after political opponents? Zero. There is absolutely nothing so far that takes this outside the IRS itself. 
Wow. All right. Let, let, let's, uh, first of all, John Heilman, um, of course, it's in the administration. Joe Klein this weekend, of course, uh, wrote something talking about, again, Nixon, Nixonian. We, we keep hearing Nixonian coming up. Of course, there'll have to be a lot more to connect it. But at the very least, President Obama, do you agree with the Washington Post, should come out, should have come out on Friday forcefully along with Jack Lew condemning this action? Should he do it today? Should people be fired? What, what should happen? Well, I think as more, the, 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 it doesn't bother me so much that he didn't come out on Friday. Again, there's been a lot of advance in terms of the facts just in the last 48 hours. So for the president to want to wait to get the full facts before he makes a statement is reasonable to me. But look, the integrity of the IRS is absolutely essential. We all understand why that is. Not just at the theoretical level that it's an independent agency, but it's the IRS. It is one that can in, induce extraordinary levels of of professional, personal uh, torment upon right. people as groups, as individuals, and so if we don't have utter faith in the apolitical nature of the IRS, we have a huge problem. It's, you know, at, the, it's at the core it, of a lot of people's it, lives. It is the core of people's lives. Also, when you talk about speech and protected yeah. speech, the thing you learn in law school very early on is all speech, for the most part, can be the government can step in and they can figure out how to regulate speech but when it comes to political speech right. political speech it's sacrosanct our founding mm -hmm. fathers meant for it to be sacrosanct the gov the supreme court conservative and liberal supreme courts alike do not allow the government to tread on political speech there is a wall around that and that wall has been knocked down by the IRS for several years now it's true and look I think and I think to answer your first question again the president needs to get involved in this at some at some level and needs to be public about it at some level I will say that the question about I mean political the, the interesting thing here is that we're we are talking about not to get too far into the weeds but 501c4 groups which are supposedly social welfare groups that that are that are tax right. exempt, right? right? So they're subsidized by the public. There is a big question about on the left, on the left, mm -hmm. and the right across the board about the abuse of 501c4s. And I think there's a or there's a reason why the IRS should be looking carefully at all of these groups about whether these groups deserve tax exempt status, whether they are actually social welfare right. groups, or whether they're polit they're effectively political action committees. So, That's so, independent so, of this so let, issue. Let, let's see the evidence that they did this to. I agree. To the I, I'm just saying there's a there's a big issue around the abuse of 501c4 status. To have an IRS that's aggressively investigating both sides is fine, and not an abrogation of political speech. To have it focusing only on one side yeah. is not fine, and that, the president and that, needs to say that. Is that is an abrogation. Of one other point speech. to make: there, there's been many overblown claims of tyranny and abuse of power from the government over the last few years. Right. We've heard those when it comes to we're coming for your guns, oh, sure. that kind of thing. Sure. This is tyranny. This is. If this is the, the government, a nonpartisan agency coming after specific groups, this time it's real. That's tyranny. I can't, I, I'll just be honest with you, I, I can't imagine much, Mark Alpern, worse than this. The, 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 the Internal Revenue Service, the tax man, who after all, we patriots are, are, are for folks. Uh, and four mothers did break away from the British government based on taxes, on a tax revolt. For the IRS uh, to go after people because of their political beliefs, I'd be saying the same thing, obviously, if it was happening on the left. I would be shocked. Uh, it's just, it's unspeakable. And the President of the United States, the head of the administration, the head of this government, needs to come out today and condemn this in the harshest terms, demand answers, and fire people. Let's applaud.